Alrighty, hey guys, welcome to another Train Sim Classic video. We're going to take a look at the long-awaited Illinois Central Mikado 282 uh, 1500 class as they were known for the IC. But first, I'd like to give a very, very warm thank you uh, to the channel supporters, aka High Ballers. Very clever name, I know. Super clever. Uh, Raymond Holster. Tamborello 1994, KTY Deck, Graham Clayton. Thank you guys so much uh, for helping keep the channel going. Thanks in order and done. Let's go ahead and take a look at the IC Mikado. Okie dokie. So we got another commission from someone within the train sim community to have these made by none other than Machine Rail, who have been making some very, very nice uh, locomotives uh, over the past several years now a lot of them being North American as well which is very nice and welcomed uh, of course this is their website this is what it looks like I will link down below directly where you can go and pick this thing up for yourself uh, but do note as they are um, Brazilian the uh, the creators of these very fine wares down at the bottom you'll see a currency thing so if you click on one of these uh, we'll go to the machines, for example. We'll just click on, we'll go ahead and click on this one here. Well, we don't have to. And it shows this. And some people are like, oh my God, that thing's $100. That's in the Brazilian currency. If you look right up here where they've got these gigantic arrows now, you change it to US dollars. Bam. You're good. It's 20 bucks. You can see all their nice, very, extremely fair prices. And this pack being $20. I've not really done much with it except lay it down in a instance within Railworks uh, currently. But so far it looks to be every bit of $20 worth. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and get into it here. So upon downloading the pack, like a lot of their uh, products or DLC for Train Simulator Classic, uh, it's going to come with an RWP file. You can slide that in via the utilities, which is very simple. Uh, it takes a little bit longer, or you can uh, unpack it, if you will, and just slide it into your Railworks folder if you know how to do that as well. Either way works. It's very simple. You have to do not much at all. But something that's going to be within that pack that you're going to download and then install is going to be a manual. Uh, you can you can click the manual from the actual uh, zip file that you'll get up upon you know purchase of the pack, of course. But it's also located within the manual section if i'm not mistaken within your uh, your railworks directory as well but it covers everything you need to know controls tech specs how to use it in the editor and it shows this entire fleet now of course we're going to take a look at it in real time here in just a moment but this is one of the biggest things that i was excited about for this pack i knew this 1500 was coming but then they started showing off these uh these rail cars i think they started with these tractors which of course looks like you know john deere tractors uh but this is all the stuff you're gonna get this is an entire pack i can't remember the last thing that released on steam that was worth every bit of twenty dollars that wasn't completely just you know rehashed content over and over and over which we tend to get sadly for a lot of the north american content in railworks this effectively is all you need now if if they made it you know, a way where this stuff can be reskinned, which I hope they did. Uh, you know, we effectively have a brand new set of pre '60s rolling stock or freight cars, and damn, do these pictures look good? So let's get in the uh, the game itself and look. Here they are, the beautiful IC RR 1500 Mikes from Mikado's 282. Uh, the IC called them uh, the 1500 class, but. We're going to have to chill on that for a minute. If you just want to see the engine, might want to skip ahead. But I hope you don't, because this is a very large portion of the pack right here. This entire rolling stock pack I've laid out before us is everything you're going to get. So a lot of you are familiar with Golden Age of Railroading, which has been some really nice older rolling stock uh, that we've been able to use, which is also freeware. I use the hell out of that stuff when I'm doing anything like, uh, you know, early 70s and onward. Um, he's even got some freeware on there. Uh, and a lot of that stock was this very stuff that we have right here. Of course, not in the uh, Illinois Central moniker and uh, logo and livery. 
uh, if you will. But it's all essentially the same stuff. So we've got like an entire new fleet here. Now, I don't know much about uh, repaints, but that's one of the biggest things I've been excited about is because if people are able to repaint, reskin these, retexture these, whatever the hell needs to be done, the sky's the limit with uh, some of the older rolling stock within train sim for North America because uh, there is just a lot, a lot of stuff here. Right, so if you don't know a whole hell of a lot about the Illinois Central, uh, as I did not as of late, hopefully this will help you out some. Uh, so this locomotive essentially belonged to the Mikado-type locomotive, which was the 282 in the, uh, the wheel arrangement, as it's known. Uh, two leading, eight drivers, uh, and two rear wheels. Uh, but it was known as the Illinois Central 1500 class. That's what they dubbed them, uh, you know, once they received them. Uh, the Illinois Central owned many, many of these things, several hundred. Uh, and in fact, they were like the third largest fleet in North America uh, that owned them in railroad history. Um, the 282 was pretty unique in the fact that the firebox was placed behind the driver's which essentially allowed the firebox to be larger. They were able to change it a bit, which produced better you know, combustion heat, therefore making more steam, energy, a.k.a. power. You know, Along with the larger driver-type trains as well, which drivers are the, the wheels that actually push the locomotive itself, uh, it could, of course, effectively reach higher speeds. Uh, compared to the earlier 280s, which were kind of like the older brother to these, if you want to think of it like that. Uh, but between the two world wars, these things were built uh, in the thousands. And then USRA, you know, built a ton of them. Uh, there was just a whole, a whole heck of a lot. But they were built between, uh, I want to say Baldwin, Alco, and Lima, uh, and then the USRA stuff as well. Now, Illinois Central's 282 roster were mainly built to specification or as delivered uh, from whichever of the three um, manufacturers built the locomotive itself with variation in superheating, uh, driver diameter, and things like that. I think about a third of Illinois Central's roster at the time uh, belonged to these uh, beloved mics, which uh, you know ran like 90%, probably 100% of its uh, trackage at the time. The IC loved these things so dearly that they were used uh, up until, I want to say about the 1960s. But there is one of these preserved today, which you can go and take a look at for yourself if you're around about Paducah, Kentucky. That is Illinois Central number 1518, which is a preserved 282 uh, in Paducah, of course. And it was basically an endpoint of a town in which it frequented uh, hauling coal. A lot of coal trains went up and down. Uh, the north to south corridor or uh, midwest to the gulf if you will and it was likely the last Mikado aka Mike is uh, you know fan base and all that is known to call it um, it was likely the last one ran so it's it's pretty cool that it was preserved in uh, in Paducah so since there were a couple of variations and specifications within the Illinois Central mics uh, that's what I'll refer to them in short to make it simple. Uh, 1518 specifically weighed almost 300,000 pounds with 64 inch drivers and what was about 27 by 30 inch drivers, uh, or drivers, cylinders, I already said drivers. Uh, they had about 225 PSI in the boiler, pressure of course effectively which made the power via steam uh, and they produced about 65,000 pounds of tractive effort. Known as the main line of mid-America, the Illinois Central Railroad ran from Chicago to the Gulf of Mexico, serving a total of about 14 states. The Illinois Central effectively ran from 1852 up until about 1999 or thereabouts, then of which it was absorbed into uh, Canadian National. Like many railroads in North America and beyond, the IC is sorely underrepresented within train sim. Uh, and it's 7,000 plus miles of track. It operated at the height of its uh, bad acidum, <laughs> we'll say, in the 1930s. So it's nice to see, you know, something a little bit different. Currently, we don't really have anywhere for these things to run, which is kind of funky. But I'm sure a lot of you know already, the guy that had these commissioned 
platform machine rail is in the works of making a route. Uh, I don't know if that route is yet released. I don't even know where it's going to release or how or anything like that. But all I know and all I've heard is that he is working on a route for this stock. So that would be very cool. Uh, of course, once I get my hands on it, I will most definitely try and uh, dive in and take a look at the route itself. So this is another very cool commission, obviously, from Machine Rail. They've made quite a few here over the last year. There is a lot more to come. They have a lot on their roster that they intend to build, not only for themselves, stuff they just wanted to do, but other people as well and other commissions. Uh, but this pack is one of a kind from machine rails so far it's it's fairly large i hope i do it you know enough justice uh taking a look at it but not stretching the video out too too long but there's a lot to look at here uh they've been working on this thing since january so about half a year uh and then of course the included stock of which you're going to get seven variants uh of rolling stock or freight cars in the pack but there's going to be multiple variants of uh several of the cars uh itself the the mikados themselves you're going to get two variants you're going to get the as delivered variant and then you're going to get the um uh the modified or whatever it's called it's you know when it got to illinois central and they they did you know, a number of things to them like a lot of railroads did uh as delivered but one of the biggest things you'll note about uh the two within railworks uh is the the uh smoke box so we'll take a look at that of course but uh the numbers are all over the place. I think what they did was, uh, in this instance, uh, here in, in Train Sim, they represented the 1923 series built by Lima uh, with like 189 units in total, which uh, not all of those are in the game number-wise. Um, but there's, uh, there's various numbers because these on the roster were kind of all over the place. But what else is neat about this pack is this was also... Um, you know, helped by, I'm sure a lot of you know as well, DSG DDR, another steam engine uh, developer for Railworks or North American Train Sim that makes a lot of nice uh, freeware, um, you know, locomotives as well that uh, have come out over the years. So uh, he assisted uh, in this pack as well, I think, for some things, uh, mainly physics and whatnot. So that's that's pretty cool. All right, enough blibbity blabbing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stock. We're going to take a look at everything, and then we're going to run this this uh, fairly chunky uh, lash up I've got sitting here. I don't know how many cars that is, but we're going to see if that thing can do some work. Uh, hopefully it will. So that's going to be a little bit later on, but we're going to look at the stock itself, which, of course, again, I'm, I'm super happy. I don't know if I'm more excited for this than the locomotives themselves because we've sorely needed some of the older stock like this, and it does look nice from what i've seen so far so this is the caboose that you're going to get obviously looks like uh the lamps work got a little bit of uh reflectivity on the back there uh the wood paneling looks okay um you know it doesn't seem to have like uh i don't know so much depth to it but you know something like that is is probably a little bit more difficult to accomplish but, uh, you know, from a good enough distance, it looks really damn nice. The Illinois Central down here on the side, the weathering all along the bottom. The uh, the font itself looks good, the logos. You get the funky door there on the side to nowhere. I wouldn't want to step out of that thing. Yeah, watch your step stenciled on the, uh, the steps here as well. There's our air hose and coupler. Got the hand rails and the hand brake, which look very nice. We'll get up above the sun here and take a look at it. Yeppers, that looks good. It's uh it's a good looking model. It's nice to finally have a good old caboose, not something that's, you know, from like ten plus years ago that's been reskinned to death. Uh so it's nice to actually have like a brand new model. You can see the inside, the interior is done up as well. Of course, we're going to get in and take a look at it once we, uh, you know, get, get in that uh, consist down there and go down the road. But uh, we're just going to do exterior stuff at the moment. But it looks really damn good. Got the smokestack over here. Yeah, it's a nice looking model. Even a nice old brass doorknob. Even that doorknob looks good. 
yeah very sharp very sharp can't wait to take a look at the inside of this thing let's look at the uh the chassis of the undercarriage down here it looks okay um you know it looks like it could do up with a bit of weathering uh but for the most part you know this this is very passable compared to some of the other stuff that we get on the steam store and beyond uh for for rolling stock Got the little uh, motor doohickey there. Or alternator, whatever the hell. Yeah, it looks okay. Could just use a bit of weathering in my eyes. But, you know, it could have been a thing where the, the, the person that commissioned this pack didn't want it to look, you know, so worn and so old. Or, you know, who knows. Um, again, it was commissioned. These, of course, are the hoppers. So you're going to get three variants of these. You're going to get hopper A, hopper B, hopper C, which come with uh, different coloring, which I've tried to lay out here. Uh, the shading and the dirtiness, I mean, they do carry coal, is, is pretty nice on there. Um, you know, the logos and all that stuff look pretty good as well. Nice handbrake. The steps look good. These are some, uh, you know, for these to not be the, the main entree of the pack, if you will, some pretty good looking stuff. Um, you know, it's it's interesting looking at the type of metal. That's one of the things Machine Rail noted when they were making this pack is the different, you know, variations of, of steel or iron. Uh, you know, whether it's like rolled, flat, dented, you know, I'm... I'm not a metallurgist, so I don't know a whole hell of a lot about that. But uh, So there's like different varieties of that. But uh, overall, this thing looks pretty darn good. You, of course, have coal. I think they can carry coal and ballast or stone. So you've got two, two loads. That's kind of like the darker uh, red, almost like a brick color there. Mainline of America logo. It looks nice. And then this one's just more of like a uh, a brown. I don't know if it's much different than the others. And then these are the uh, the ballast of the stone cars as well. I'm assuming the uh, trucks, axles, all that good stuff's going to be about the same roughly as um, the caboose. Yeah, see, these, these seem to look a little bit better than the caboose. I, I don't know. Maybe it's like I'm looking at it differently in the sunlight, but it... Uh, yeah, those look a little bit better. Those are okay. Get that piston there for the brakes. That looks nice. And we got our dumpers. Being this, it is a hopper, so it's got to get rid of it somehow. Over here, we have our gondolas, or gondolas, however the hell you want to say it. Uh, one of the things I did notice while I was talking about those hoppers over there is this. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, I don't know if there's like a texture mist somewhere or, you know, however all that works. It looks a little bit funky. Um, yeah, not not sure what's going on there. But again, the uh, the ribbed metal on this looks very good as well. It's definitely wood-sided. Yeah, it looks like there's kind of some weird stuff going on there. Oh, that's like a, a 3D piece of metal there, so it's lighter on this side. And you can actually see through these sons of bitches. Look at that. These uh, these planks of wood, the little slats here. You can actually see through into the interior. That's pretty damn neat. If I can get uh, angled there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's nice looking bolts. Check the bolts out. Rivet counters, as some of us are called. Yeah, those look very nice. Uh, it's... I mean, the wood texture looks okay. It almost has like a plasticky look to it um you know but if you're about yay away you know sitting right here taking a look it's not bad at all the uh yeah the trucks and the wheels the uh the axles are different so look at that yeah these are actually like a, a more kind of worn look those look very nice. I do like those a lot. I wish they'd added those to the caboose. The caboose seemed a bit too clean. Handbrake chain. That sound bitch is three-dimensional. Very nice. D 
Yeah, it's good looking. So these, uh, you're going to get an A, B, and C variant as well, as you can see the different colors. Uh, any gondolas there. And then this one, I like this one a lot. This is cool. The uh, the stone. It's, um, you know, it's a bit muddy, but to save on performance and stuff like that, I'm sure that looks totally fine. The, the shape of it looks very nice, very organic. Uh, that's cool. Definitely something totally new. Let's go take a look at this one. Here we got our lumber. So we got our, uh, uh, you know, felled trees, if you will. Big old, big old chunks in the middle and little ones on each end, which is pretty neat. Got a couple more just thrown on there as well. So it's not all just this uniform, you know, fill to the car. So that's pretty neat. Those look good. Even look at the rings in this son of a biscuit. Some good looking wood. I'll leave that one at that. This one carries coal. It uh, obviously looks a bit different. You can put anything you want in any of these cars. So as far as I can tell, uh, like if you want this color uh, of the gondola C, you can put wood in this one if you wanted, for example. But this is coal. Yeah, some good-looking dang cars so far. Over here, we naturally have the box car, which is also wood-sided or slatted, with the uh, with the metal beams. The, this this model looks really damn good uh, right off the bat. Um, the wood seems to look a little bit different. It's still kind of got that plasticky look to it, but uh, you know, I don't know anything about texturing and modeling, so I'm not uh, not totally sure how how difficult that would be. Um, but that looks pretty good. Metal supports or struts or beams or whatever you want to call it look very nice. You've got the uh, appropriate shading back there so it's not just flat, you know. Got the metal sliding door. Yeah, that looks pretty sharp. Let's look at the roof. All worn out wood planks to walk along there to gangway. Yeah, these are very sharp. I'm so glad to have some actual, you know, new old rolling stock. All right, over here we got the tractors, which uh, obviously, you know, to me look like John Deere. Uh, from Wisconsin. I think J John Deere was built in Wisconsin, right? I think they were. Uh, anyway, they look pretty cool. They look good. It's nice to have a new model. We did have some older uh, tractor models, if I'm not mistaken, in train sim. Uh, a few, actually. Not only for North American stuff as well, but these are the flat cars. So you're going to get uh, two variations of these. You're going to get the ones with the stakes and the ones without the stakes. And uh, you got tractors. And then uh, piggies or TOFCs, trailers on flat cars. And you're going to get two variations of the trailers on flat cars. It's nice. we got the wheel chocks there. That's pretty cool. Nice little detail. See, this is like what I was talking about with a kind of different type of metal or iron. It's just kind of that, that uh, dented, stressed look. See like a weird thing going on there with the uh, rivet? Kind of see through on that. Not totally sure what's going on there. Looks kind of funky. Uh, this looks a bit weird as well. So the numbers, as usual, look very crispy. Uh, but that I see on there is pretty low res. It kind of stands out compared to the numbers uh, as well as, um, you know, the logo itself. But it's, you know, it's, it's not all that bad. This is like... Uh, so it's like getting an ice cream sundae after your filet mignon, if you will. And the, uh, the mics over there are the filet. So I cannot complain one bit so far. This is uh, very lovely. Some good looking tar, too. Yeah, it's cool. It's tractor stakes, non stake flats. These are the old school tractor trailers with the, uh, you know. I'm sure some IC fans out there may want to stone me to death, but I've never been a fan of this brown and orange. <laughs> Those colors just, you know, they don't do it. But when you see these colors, 
you know, you think of the Cleveland Browns and the Illinois Central. And, uh, you know, so it, it does do that. It does look very nice on there, though. Some of it, um, that doesn't look very sharp, if I'm completely honest. Uh, but, it, you know, it's all about the shape. It's a very curvy versus, like, the blocky text of the uh, IC and Mid-America bit. So, kind of understand that. You got the green diamond here, the IC. Those are a little bit low res as well, a little chunky. But them tires look pretty good, man. They're, they're appropriate, like, old-school tractor-trailer wheels. So that's pretty neat. Those look all right. Let's look at the taillights while we're at. Yeah, them look good, too, man. Them look good, too. This is just a basic um, tractor-trailer here. Non-IC, just a little bit of a variation. And then we looked at the box car, so let's head on down, chunk. Getting to the end, we've got the reefer. I feel like every reefer back in these days looked exactly like this. They had the same colors. They just threw a logo and some lettering on there. But again, we got a new old school reefer, so that's cool. These handles look pretty nice. Got the rib bits on the edge as well. See, this IC logo looks pretty good. Uh, still, it's a little bit, you know, a little shy, low res, but, uh, and then the IC here as well. That's, that's sharper than on some of the other cars. So that's kind of funky. This door looks good. I like this, uh, all this riveted stuff. Got the, uh, the locks on top and bottom and the hinges. Yeah, that's some nice stuff. Very nice. Illinois Central Dairy Dispatch. Dairy. This one's a bit different. This handbrake here, chained to the rod. In the top, where they could pop these suckers open. I don't know if you could do that. I don't think you can. Uh, because when you place them in the editor, they are effectively empty, and then you load them. So I don't think they can pop up or, or close. But the top looks pretty good as well. The uh, weathering along the top there, all the just, you know, grime. That's nice. And then we got three tanks. So we got three variations of tanks. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with these. I think they're just different types of weathering. So this one here looks like it's pretty clean. New. Again, it's like a different type of, of metal, steel, iron, whatever. It's a little bit more shiny. Um, whereas, like, some of the stuff back there had the uh, indentions and, and stretch marks and all that good stuff. And then this one over here has got some leakage down the side, which is always cool to see. You know, I mean, not, not for the environment so much, but in real works, it looks nice. This one's over here. It's uh, different as well. It's a lot more heavily weathered here. Go back to this one. We've got a Union Tank Car Company on there. UTLX, of course, still going strong. I think UTLX is still around, isn't they? It and they? Jesus Christ, what did I just say? Coupler 9 butt. ARAN. 2 degrees. Brake beam. Cardwell gear. GH. K2 triple. No clue what, like, two-thirds of that means. Got placards on there, which is nice. Flammable liquid. Yeah, these look good, brother. I'm digging it, man. I'm totes digging it. So that's the pack, guys. You're going to get all this rolling stock as uh as part of the pack which is uh pretty cool i mean are we going to start seeing rolling stock for everything who the hell knows it'd probably take a lot longer between releases but uh ed is certainly nice to have all right let's take a look at the mickey mics this of course is the ic 1500 class or type or whatever uh now this is the modified one this is the one that when ic would have gotten it they would have changed the smoke box door up a bit 
Uh, as you can tell, um, I, I don't really see a whole lot of difference between the two except for the actual smoke box door itself. So it's actually a bit smaller on the modified. And when you're looking within the editor, just as a heads up, when you go to place these down, the as delivered is just going to be 1500 class. And then the modified will have a M in uh, brackets or something like that, if I remember right. So that's the modified one. And then this is the standard, so the door itself is actually a lot smaller on the modified, and I have got no friggin' clue as to why they would do that. Um, you know, if you know, as always, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure a lot of other people might be wanting to know as well. But uh, we'll take a look at the modified. Man, that is a work of art, just looking at this son of a gun. That is pretty. Again, you know, like, because I, I, was, I was trying to keep up with their stuff on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you have an account. I highly recommend following them as they update a lot of their stuff um, fairly often. But uh, they were talking about how they kept kind of having to go back to the drawing board because not, you know, every piece of rolling stock or locomotive or whatever is all the same type of steel or iron. Uh, and so they were, you know, fiddling with different types. And uh, that's pretty apparent to see between the uh, the actual front of the smoke box there, and then uh, farther back, and then you got like the uh, the piston or the cylinder area there. Good lord, this thing is gorgeous, man. We'll just start at the front. I don't know where to start. This sucker's pretty though. The light looks very good with the cap on there. I like that a lot. Got some streaking on there as well. These bolts look super fancy. Fancy pants. Got the electrical cable. Strung down, going up over the top of the loke. And look at these hinges, man. Good lord above. Got the number boards on the side and flat fronted. So these, obviously, you would kind of loosen them and, and twist them to the side, and then you could open the door up, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of like some tank car lids. Got our markers, which are operable, red, green, and white. We'll check those out momentarily. I do love Machine Rail and their brother in train simming developer diesel workshops. Uh, old school lenses like that, these old glass lenses, those look awesome. Those look absolutely awesome. We'll get low. Got the steps. Old school diamond plate. That actually looks okay. Um, you know, there, there's almost like no depth to it, but it's, uh, you know, it looks pretty good. Ooh, this sucker is pretty, man. At the pilot. I think several of the 1500s at Illinois Central had different types of pilots. Um, I don't know what this one is or the reasoning behind it or anything like that. But I know I have seen different ones. The pilot wheels here. That's a good looking train wheel. Very nicely weathered. This big old chunky cylinder. Man, we're going to see all this in action. So let's just take a, a, a brief uh, scooch around the locomotive itself. There's a Lima stamp on there. Incorporated November 1923. Man, this... Uh, this... This is probably the best looking locomotive they've made to date. Uh, you know, all, all the extra time they spent on this thing shows. It really shows. Because it is just... It's freaking detailed. This corded hose right here. The texture on that looks excellent. Man, and the freaking gigantic tender on these things. 
All right, let's go get in it and uh, and do some stuff. All right, here she is in her idle state. This, of course, is I only found it appropriate. Number one five one eight at Paducah. The remaining IC Mikado, and ah, of course that safety had to go off. This is her in her uh, default kind of idle state, if you will. So. Let's count our cars here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, oh shit, 45, 46 with the caboose. All right. We're on level ground. Uh, for those wondering, I am on the Livonia sub in uh, Louisiana. Just because it was, eh, it's almost like a prototypical area. It's nice and flat, um, and it's you know I, li I like the way some of the assets and stuff and the the foliage looks on this route. There's really not much to this route, but uh, you know that's what we got for now until that other route comes out for this locomotive. Also, I'd like to note uh, I am not a steam engine locomotive engineer fireman or anything not in real life not in train sim i love them all the same i don't recall if i've got auto fireman on or off so i'm probably going to very poorly operate this thing so be prepared we've got our headlight Looks very nice. It's not over the top. It's not too orange. It's not too white. It's kind of right in between. Got a little bit of a flare on there. That looks pretty good. It does illuminate on the ground. I'd like to see something where you can kind of turn that off and on, but it, it doesn't seem too bright on the ground, which is nice. Uh, you can do the class lights, which is the Y key. And then you change them with the U key. U key. And then shift U to go back. Why isn't... Uh, <laughs> I can't get the white one on. Alright, let's get this thing moving. And we'll look at stuff here. Holy shit. Hold on, let me get the let me get the manual here. Cab lights. So they do take a few frames off, but there's a lot of shadow casting opportunities in here. But this looks good. Mamma mia, this is like smoke box level. This little copper pipe here even. How it's not perfectly straight. There's like a little little bend in it in the middle there before the loop. Woo! That is sexy. That is sexy. Get open the hatch up top. That is Shift V. There you go, right there. Of course, it does work inside and out. What else are we looking at here? Uh, task lights are E. Those are exterior. Let me zoom out here. There we go. Said I'd look really nice at night. 
One of the things I'm already enjoying is the safety going off isn't stabbing me in the ear with a blunt uh, butter knife right now in the cab. Outside, it's loud. In the cab, it's not overly loud. So there is some differentiation between sounds interior and exterior, which is always a blessing. All right. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and check it out. You can open the windows, of course, or move them anyway. Whistle test. That sounds good. It sounds really good. That's probably the best whistle they have done to date. Fudge. Slap me on my ass and call me Sally. That sounds very Chad. Do a little uh, sound test, Doppler test. You still hear that son bitch? Oh yeah. That's about the distance there. Frick, man. All right, let's check that bell. Animated, of course. All right, let's uh, let's poorly operate this thing. Now, the fact that I know DSG DDR uh, had his hand physics-wise in this thing, it's not going to be super easy to operate for me. So, reverse her all the way forward. Make the brake gauge. Kind of hard to see. Let's see our uh, camera views here. So we got fireman's side, rear. Firebox. Can you open these little uh, doors here? Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, Borther. Right, what's that little fuse box there? What we got here? What we got? What's that? That's our class lights. That's the task light. Gauge lights. Wait, they were already on, weren't they? Yes, sir. What's this? Cab light. There we go. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting pretty decent frames. The cab light does kill it, but as does a lot of really nice things in, in train sim. Some of the interior texturing is kinda weird. It's got that uh, like shimmery effect to it. Um you know, but it's, it's not the worst thing in the world, for sure. That nice padded armrest there, that's lovely. Got the coal dumping out of the tinder there. Got our shovel. Tinder brake. All right. I'm an eager beaver. Let's get this thing going. Check our air here. That's our loco brake. Just want to test that out. Go. Is this little hatch open? <laughs> Holy shit, it does. Can you see the exterior? Fudge, I didn't mean to do that. Hot dog. That sucker do be open. Hell yeah, all right. Dude, that whistle is very spicy. All right, I can hear the groaning and creaking. That is nice. Oh, look at all these valve handles. I have not a clue what any of them do, even though they're labeled. I am a bona fide steam idiot. You can open these other hatches here. Hell yes. They work on the uh, exterior.
see the ground down there. Let's go outside and have a look. All right, cylinder cocks. Off and on. Yeah, this this mofo's heavy, guys. What I say, almost 50 cars. And we're level. Let me look at the manual here real quick. Uh, let's see. see, 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 see. All right, the blower is in and shift in. There we go. Fire inside naturally. You can hear it as well. Very spicy. Sander. I don't know where the switch is. We're just going to look for something to move. There it is. Oh, it's actually a, uh, a hand wheel. So that's your sander. Of course, down here is the air brake. Uh, let's see what else we got. Water injectors are L and K. I'm assuming for both sides. And then shift L to turn it back off. the engineer side there we go you can hear it sounds like turning on the shower shut it back off all right what else we got sand dome cover you can open that that is V That's pretty cool. The latch even works. All right. Let's watch this thing do its uh do what it was intended to do. You get up in that smoke and that steam and it, it tanks the frames, but that's pretty much anything with a lot of smoke and steam and trains them. I forget what that gear is called, but moving the reverser, you can actually see that's animated as well. Changes the angle in which uh, the drivers are pushed. Good Lord, that is hot. Look at this thing, man. I feel like they got the whistle sound appropriation really well done in this. Uh, in some of the locomotives in the past, you know, you couldn't hear it under power or, you know, something like that. This, this sounds very nice and level, which is, uh, goodness, this thing is gorgeous. Oh, getting some wheel slip. Yes, hell. That looks good. Even the metallic sound. So that opens the engineer side injector. When you hit the when you hit that on the F4 hood, didn't realize that. We'll do some wheel slip tests. There we go. I got the, uh, the J bar pretty low because I'm trying to burn off some of that excess steam.
There we go. We got some chuffing going on. You know what? While we're at a low speed, let's listen to some of the cars and see if we got anything with those. So they don't sound like the default Kuju rail car sounds, but they're uh, they're still a little little bit quiet. Of course, we'll check it out again once we get up to speed. Do like the uh, the joined rail clink clunk in there. And uh, while we're still getting up to speed here, let's go ahead and get in the back. Check out the box car. Looks like some of the boys been playing tic tac toe back here. Very nice. This is uh, the box car, of course. Got our sink. Got some clackety clunk in here as well. Very cool. Up top, look at that, man. Can't zoom though. That's weird. I'm trying to zoom up here. Uh, camera, of course. Get that chair, dude. Got our lamp up here. It's a good looking chair. What a view, man. What a view. Oh, this is the pooper. We've, uh, we've reached the pinnacle of train simming, ladies and gentlemen. We have a, uh, we have another train set where the pooper is accessible, complete with toile paper. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Don't know why train, train sim players have always wanted toilets on trains. I don't get it. Uh, now water tank looks good. The piping looks good, but uh, I'm no plumber and this isn't plumbing simulator, but that's, that's cool. I don't know what's in there, like cookies or something while you're waiting. You know, if you gotta pop one off sitting there for a while maybe some cookies Is the door open no all right we got another view here got the stove look at that some bitch man got the uh, protective grate around it that looks excellent that's some pots and pans hanging up on there with the tea kettle or the coffee kettle as well this is a big ass caboose man you could live in this thing wait we're already in the shitter Apologies. See if any of the windows open. Or that freaky door right there. Get our telephone and our calendar. January 1930. I already went in the shitter. Oh, that's a mirror. I just realized. You can see the back of the toilet back there. That's pretty cool. Let's see. This is this side. You have a door. has got the hat hanging on there. Very cool. Love little details like this. Illinois Central. Mainline mappage. That's neat. That is neat. Got a suitcase over it, y'all. If I'm going the right way. A little table here. With some cards and letters. Orders. All that good stuff. I want to get over to whatever that is. Dang it. <laughs> I don't think there's an angle to... Son of a... I'll tell you what we'll do. Good old eight key. What's up, baby? Love it. I got like the era appropriate, um, you know, pinups. Some extra coal in there for the, uh, the stove. Got another cowboy hat up chair. Some more pinups. Ooh, she's a cowgirl. Dude, even the chair, so you can lift it up and down with the handle. This thing is uh, impressive. Impressive. All right, that's the caboose. Very badass. And we're rolling. Let's see if we can do the traditional head out. Hell yeah.
All right, let's go ahead and bring that J bar down. We'll do about 45 percentile. Give her some more power. Yeah, this thing is taking time to get to speed here, guys. You can't you can't get too crazy with it or your wheel slip naturally. Nice and easy. Giving her a little bit more juice. Nope. <laughs> a little slippage in the bippage. I'll throw some sand on it. I'm going to cheat and use the F4 HUD and leave it on. I gotta hear this thing at full chat before we end, before we adjourn today. All right, let's do a, a low to mid speed run by here. Oh, look at that beauty, man. Red cab top on there. Smoke particles look very nice as well. Color difference. There's still not much to the freight cars. Uh, I was hoping there'd be a little bit more sound to these things. It just, it really sounds like going over, uh, you know, joints or switch noise or whatever is the only thing added. All right, we're doing 15 mile an hour. Let's drop the reverser some more. Drop it to about 40. Give her a little more juice. You even got some tools and gloves on there. Look at that. That is neat, man. Lubricator. All right, let's see what I can get away with here. Regulators at 40%. Can probably go ahead and drop the uh, the reverser back. I'll try 35-ish. More regulator. 50% or halfway doing uh, 17 mile an hour
drive 55. So I'm trying to listen if there's any kind of noticeable sound difference in between low, mid, and high speed, which there have been in some of the machine rail stuff in the past. Easier to catch, but it, uh, it seems like it's been pretty seamless so far. There's 60% on the regulator, almost two thirds up. Sixty-four percent. Doing twenty mile an hour. Boiler pressure is dropping finally. <laughs> Sixty-six. Seventy. I think you can close the windows all the way. There we go. Nice. I'm trying to see if there's any sound variation. I mean, the back's always open, so. Get this window open. Oh, yeah, it's tough to get to. We got her done. All right, 24 mile an hour regulator, 70%. Here we go. 72. on the J-Bar. Regulator 76. We're doing 26 mile an hour. We actually slowed down a bit, I think. We're not pissing anymore, though, so that's good. Throw some coal in there. There's 80% on the regulator. All right, let's try a run by at this higher speed. Nine mile an hour, just about. Mm. 
Yeah, I wish the real cars sounded better, but they don't. That's, I mean, it's going to take a while to get the thing up to speed. We're doing 30 mile an hour. It's, it's still getting there. Um, I think the sound is definitely better off at lower end. Uh, at higher end like this, it, you kind of hear this repetitive, you know, points of sound. But there's like three or four kind of sound notes, and they just start over again. But the way they edited them to get to the speed they actually did a pretty good job with because before there was always a noticeable change uh you know in shelf speed but uh let's go ahead and kill the power and try to brakes out So it's a lapped system. Which is always kind of hard to, uh, you know, finitely move with, uh, with your keys, your keyboard whatever you're using. It seems to be slowing down pretty darn good, though. Um, you know, it, it, at first, it, it kind of came on pretty strong. And uh, now it's, it's, it's eased up a bit. Um... But yeah, it, this actually feels all right, air-wise. We'll throw a little bit more on it. A little bit more. So, I'm not hearing a lot of uh, non-power ap applied clunking and clanking, which is another thing I feel like Machine Rail always kind of lacked with a lot of their machines. I feel like I can hear a tiny bit. But uh, some more would, would definitely be appreciated. Well, that's a hell of a pack, guys. The Machine Rail, Illinois Central, 1500 class. Uh, and rolling stock. I mean, you get a lot of stuff in this pack. Uh, as of right now, like I said, there's really nowhere to run the thing, which you know kind of sucks the life out of it a bit. But like I said, the, the gentleman that uh, had this thing commissioned is supposed to be working on a route which this thing uh, is going to be, you know, prototypical for. I don't know much about it. Uh, if I do catch word of it, uh, I'll, I'll try and let you know as soon as I can. Um, but I think that's going to about cover it, guys. This is a nice, 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 nice little pack. It's every bit worth of $20 uh, in my eyes, in my opinion, compared to, for example, this, uh, this horrid... <laughs> modern locomotive that was just announced today coming to steam soon in uh, norfolk southern colors uh that thing's going to be 20 bucks probably 
So when you compare that to like something like this, it's it's clear winner every time, which is which. You can tell the guys and gals that, that put their hearts into this stuff and, and want it to be good. And this is one of them. But that's it, guys. Uh, sorry, Phil, it was a bit of a long one. Uh, if you held in there all the way, thank you very much, uh, as usual. Uh, it's quite a lot to cover in the pack. Uh, but I'm glad we finally got this thing. I'm looking forward to the route. As soon as I can get my hands on it, if it ever does come out, um, I will try to uh, bring it to you, show you around, and all that good stuff. But for now, that is it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. See ya. Mm -hmm.